Hello and welcome to another video for Godot VR. I've been sick the past few days, so I'm just going to do a short video on a simple but asked for topic. We'll be implementing rendering a different output to screen than what the player is seeing in their headset. I need to give a quick shout out to Todd Lankar, I hope I got your name right, who emailed me about this and did some of the groundwork. Also note that we're using a model of the Oculus Rift in our demo today that was made by Eternal Realm who generously made it available on Sketchfab. For the next release of Godot, Sketchfab has released an add-on that will allow you to download this straight into your project. For now we will just download the GLTF. In order to separate rendering to the HMD we will need to create a viewport. Godot will create a separate render target for this viewport to which it will render our player view. We make our player scene a child of this viewport. This results in our ARVR camera becoming the camera used to render our viewport. Viewports are not spatial nodes. Our player nodes transform will thus be relative to the global center of our scene. We can already turn the ARVR toggle on for this viewport to ensure the contents of this viewport is shown on the HMD. We also need to set a size. The ARVR server will update this to the correct size, but if no size is set, this will prevent the viewport from being evaluated. We also need to set the update mode to always, or the viewport will not be rendered. Last but not least, we need to set up our shadow atlas. I'm using the defaults from the main viewport here. We need to make a few small changes to our main script. We no longer need to set our settings on our main viewport, so we comment out that code. We do however still need to turn HDR off if we're not using OpenVR, but we turn it off in our new viewport. Some things we will only render in our spectator view, and in a later video we'll probably have certain things that only render on the HMD. Godot can handle this using layers, and there is a neat new feature in Godot 3 where you can name these layers. Our first layer that is used by default will render in both. Our second layer will render on the HMD only. And our third layer will only render in our spectator view. We will thus turn our third layer off on our ARVR camera node. Now it is time to add a spectator camera to our scene. On this camera we turn our second layer off. We also make it current to let Godot know we want this camera to be used for our main view. Next we assign our follow camera script. This is the script I wrote for my vehicle demo. It's not the best for our use here but it will do for now. We need to reselect the nodes to get access to our export variables and set our follow camera to follow our player. Finally, we should move our camera into a good starting position. Now it's time to load in our headset so we can see the player's head moving around. We select our GLTF file and go to the import tab to tweak some settings. We will rename the root node to Oculus and we will set the scale to 0.05 and then re-import the file. The size is probably still too big, but it works for this demo. We double click on the GLTF file and select that we want to create a new inherited scene. This allows us to change the meshes that were loaded so they are not visible in the HMD by only selecting the third layer. We'll skip over doing the other meshes. We save our scene so we can use it. We'll simply load this as a child node onto our ARVR camera node. This will automatically position this object in the correct spot. We do need to rotate it by 180 degrees around the Y axis first. So here we are back at the demo from the start of this video. You can really see the HMD is way too big and the follow camera isn't that suitable for this purpose. It does the job for this demo however. We will probably revisit both another time. We will look at the issue that not only the viewport for the HMD is rendering at 90 frames per second, our spectator viewport is also doing so and at full resolution that is a lot of wasted performance. Let's look at a possible solution. We will introduce a second viewport that we use for rendering our spectator view. This allows us to control how often this viewport is updated. Because we want to output this viewport directly to screen, we will first add a viewport container. We add a new viewport to this container. 
and then we drag our camera into our viewport. We do need to make sure we reassign our player to our follow node as the relative path changes. The rest we will do in code. We need to edit our main.gd script file. At the top we create a method that will query the resolution of our screen and copy that into our viewport. We could save further performance by scaling this down if we want to. We then call our new function for a ready function and make sure our function is called whenever the resolution of the window changes. Next we will create a process function. Our process function will measure how much time has passed and compare that to how much time one frame should take. If enough time has passed that we want to render a new frame, we will reset our timing value and we will set the update mode of our viewport to update once. This will result in a new frame being rendered and that new frame being displayed on screen. For demonstration purposes, you'll see that I set my target FPS to 10 frames per second just to make the effect visible. I ended up lowering this to 5 for the demo at the end of this video. The setting that makes sense depends on what you end up doing. If this is purely for spectating, I would keep it low, probably around 30 FPS. But if the spectator allows a multiplayer setup, you might want to increase it. You can see how the frame rate has dropped uncomfortably low. But it shows that our approach for limiting the FPS of the spectator view works. There were two small issues that I didn't catch while recording. You will have noticed right at the end of writing the process function the autocompletion didn't overwrite what I had already typed and appended my choice. The other issue I had to resolve before recording my demo was that I also had to configure the shadow atlas on my spectator viewport. We now have a really nice base to start doing entirely different things on the screen than what the player is seeing in the HMD. Even if you do not want to limit the FPS, having the second viewport is still a good idea as it makes separating what is on screen and what is displayed in the HMD so much easier. You could even use the own world option to completely separate things out. One other thing that I hope to explore in a future video is using a third controller to reposition the spectator camera. Combining this with actual real life camera footage and a green screen should prove a lot of fun. But that is for another day. Hope you enjoyed this short video, see you next time.